Hey everyone and welcome to another artwork breakdown video. Mike here as always and in this video I'll be taking you through all the layers I use to make this art piece in Photoshop. Now let me go ahead and apologize now for the black bars in the video. I'm still learning Adobe Premiere and was nearly done editing the video before I realized I had royally screwed up. So I recently rewatched Alien 3 for the first time in several years and checked out the assembly cut version as I'd heard it's closer to director David Fincher's original vision for the film. I've always really enjoyed this movie and never understood the criticisms it's received since its release. It's dark, moody, and really atmospheric. And while the CGI certainly doesn't hold up, the rest of the film looks like it could have been made today. Anyway, I was immediately struck by this short scene during the opening credits of the film. I thought the framing of this scene was just incredible, and it inspired me to create some artwork using that same composition. So, without further ado, here's the breakdown of how I created the Planet Crackers. Okay, so once inside Photoshop, I created a new blank canvas with the dimensions set to the same aspect ratio as the screenshot from the movie I'm using for inspiration. I filled that with a gradient using colors I sampled from a light and dark area in that screenshot, keeping in mind that I wanted the main light source to be coming from the left hand side. Then I dropped in a sky image and sized it to the canvas. I positioned it so that the sunset, or is it a sunrise, was on the left hand side where I'd be adding the arches later. I masked it out a bit around the sunset, not totally erasing the clouds, but just making them a little less prominent. Then I used a hue saturation adjustment layer to lighten the sky up a bit. Next I dropped in an image of a dirt pile and cropped out a small part of it that will serve as the ground where the futuristic dozers are going to sit once I add those in in a little while. I used another part of that same image to put a dirt pile that will be more in the foreground. I clipped a hue saturation adjustment layer to both dirt piles to match their color to the rest of the scene and also clipped a couple of curves adjustment layers to each pile individually to adjust their darkness separately since one is in the foreground and one is in the background. I then created these highlights along the top of both piles by clipping a hue saturation adjustment layer to each pile, turning up the brightness and setting it to a bluish color that matched the sky. Then I used Blend Ift on those adjustments to target specific tones in the dirt piles and then just painted those in with a mask. Lastly, I added some haze between the piles in front of the one closest to the camera just to add some depth. Now I laid down some concrete on the left hand side where the arches will go and masked it in where I wanted. Then clipped the levels adjustment layer to it to darken it down and match everything else. On top of the concrete layer, I put in a kind of sandy dirt road image to create the path that the caped figure I'll be adding in later will be walking on. And as with the concrete layer, I clipped a huge saturation adjustment to darken it down a bit as well. Now, I wanted to enhance the sunset, so I did this by making a new layer, setting it to the screen blending mode, and sampling a pink color from the existing sunset and just dabbing a large circle there. On another layer, also set to screen mode, I sampled a yellow color and dabbed a small circle on top of that previous one. Then I made one more layer, set that to screen mode as well just like the others, and dabbed a small white circle above the other two layers to be the brightest part of that sunset. To show that this scene is set on an alien world, I added a couple of planets to the sky. One that's closer and one that's a bit further away. Then I used a soft brush with a low opacity and flow to paint an atmospheric glow on each of the planets. So the image I used for these arches is of a metal sculpture that's displayed outside the Palace of Versailles in France. I don't remember seeing them when I was there, but that was back in 2007, so maybe they've added it since then. Anyway, I wanted it to look like the hull of a spaceship whose construction was perhaps started years ago but then abandoned, and now it's just been sitting there for who knows how long and become part of the landscape. I also like the perspective it creates too. I decided to add another set of arches in the extreme foreground and blurred them a bit to create more of depth in the scene. I then used a chain paintbrush to paint these chains coming off the arches for no particular reason other than I thought it looked pretty cool. I then clipped a hue saturation adjustment to each pair of arches and their chains and adjusted the color to match the scene. I also clipped a curves adjustment layer to each group to adjust the lightness depending on its distance from the camera. Generally, the further away from the camera, the lighter it would be due to atmospheric haze. 
I grouped together all the arches and chains into one large group folder so that I could then clip a series of adjustments to that group and have it affect everything in that folder and nothing else. First I clipped a hue saturation adjustment to add an overall bluish tone to the arches group to again match the scene better. Next I created seven individual layers to add highlights cast from the sunset onto the arches. The arches closest to the sunset would have the brightest highlights obviously and then they'd gradually fade in intensity the further away from the light source of the sunset they get. Now it's kind of hard to see, but I added some highlights on the outside of the arches that'd be coming from the light cast from the planets. Then I thought the arches were looking a little bit flat and fake, so I added some texture to them with a texture layer set to soft light or overlay and just clipped that to the arches group. And lastly for the arches, to add just a bit more atmosphere, I added just a little more haze covering all but the two in the foreground. Now I added in the cloaked figure walking down the path. We don't know who this is supposed to be. It could be anyone. Maybe a hero coming to stop the evil industrialists from mining all this planet's resources. Or maybe it's just the foreman of this futuristic excavation endeavor. To fit him into the scene, I'll just add a shadow to him and put a little glow around him. Again, I put some haze in the foreground just to add a little more atmosphere and to show that it's supposed to be a dirty industrial work zone. Now I added in three sci-fi looking machines. I'm calling them dozers just to make it easy, but really they're more like planet crackers, mining the planet and stripping it of its resources. I have fun. I wanted these machines to look huge. Huge! So the first thing I did was change the cab windows by first flipping them so that the smaller windows were at the top. Then I covered the bottom part with more of the metal hull. Having a smaller window shows that these are larger machines, kind of like how having smaller windows on a spaceship in a movie shows the scale since we know how big windows usually are compared to humans. I clipped a hue saturation adjustment layer to each dozer to change its color to match the scene, and clipped a curves adjustment layer to each one as well to change their brightness depending on how far away they are to add depth, just like with the arches. I then added some haze around the dozers, again to add to the industrial atmosphere of the scene. Now, I knew I would need to add a sunlight reflection to the nearest dozer coming from that sunset, so I made an orange solid color adjustment, clipped it to the dozer, and used Blend If to remove it from the shadows, then just painted it in where I wanted to see it. Now, here are the highlights added to the dozers. To create these, I just used a normal brush and painted with an orange color on the sides facing the sunset, and a lighter blue color on the top for the light coming from the planets. Then I went around and added a glow to the brightest highlights of the dozers with a soft brush on a low opacity. Next for the cab lights, I painted an orange color to those windows to kind of show the internal lights running inside. Then, and let me zoom in so you can see this, I painted highlights where the lights would cast onto other parts of the metallic hull. Then on another layer set to a screen blending mode, I added a slight glow coming from the window light with the same orange color. Now, I imagine that because these machines are so massive, there would need to be some sort of lights on the highest points to warn passing ships, kind of like the lights on a radio tower. So I painted a red highlight on the highest points here, then added a little glow reflecting off the haze around the lights. I then put smoke coming out of the front of, I don't know what they are, the part of the machine that hits the ground, uh, with a smoke brush. I thought it added realism, like the machines just finished a round of doing whatever it is they do. Do they physically ram into the ground like a jackhammer to crack open the surface and the smoke is caused by the heat generated from friction? Or are they just large lasers that shoot into the earth and get superheated and it's smoke from that? Who knows, it's up to our imagination. So to show the scale of the machines even more, I dropped in a few workers here, then clipped a curves adjustment to add highlights and fade them into the distance appropriately. Next I added some ships. These could be dropships just passing over from a nearby military installation, or they could be part of this planet cracking operation and carrying supplies of some sort. Again, it's totally up to your imagination. In any case, I clipped another hue saturation adjustment to each ship and adjusted the color to match everything else. And like I've done a few times already, I clipped a curves adjustment to each ship to change its lightness depending on its distance into the background. Then I added highlights to each ship using a bluish color for light that's coming from the planets and orange for light coming from the sunset. I put extra highlights on the two ships directly under the large planets since they would be a little brighter being closer to the light source and all. Then some glow from the ship's engines. 
And finally, condensation trails, Kim trails behind the ship. Again, painted with a custom smoke brush on a low flow. To add yet even more atmosphere and to show how dusty and hazardous this dig site is, I used the same method as the ship contrails to create some like dusty wind blowing off the tips of the arches and the dozers. Now I added a color lookup on the color blending mode just to pull the image's colors together and give it a cohesive look of taking place at dusk. But adding that color lookup adjustment for some reason added a reddish color to a couple of the ships and made them not fit the scene so well. So I quickly clipped a hue saturation adjustment to those two ships to fix that. Now it's time to color tone the image. I first made a vibrance adjustment layer and played around with that until I was happy. Then added another color lookup adjustment set to color blending mode just like the others and lowered its opacity to 34%. I then created a stamp visible layer of everything so that I could use a camera raw filter on it. Then I just added some texture, lowered the highlights, and brought out the shadows inside a camera raw just a touch to give it a kind of slight HDR look. And lastly, I added an exposure adjustment layer and brought up the overall exposure just to add a little punch to the image. Next I wanted to make this image look more painted, so I photo bashed it a little bit. I used the art history brush and a custom brush to make some large brush strokes. It's pretty subtle, but I'm going to be building this effect up layer by layer. On another layer, I added some smaller brush strokes with the same art history brush. With the larger strokes, I was focusing more on painting on the edges within the image, but with the smaller one, I'm painting over some of the details instead. Here, I used a custom brush to paint kind of like dripping paint all around the image. Now, on another stamp visible layer of all of the layers, I used the mixer brush with another custom brush, to quickly go around the image, brushing away details and adding random brush strokes. Doing this part will make more sense when I add sharpening to the image in a minute. Now I use some other custom paint brushes to add a few more details on the image. This color lookup adjustment I'm using now is from a pack of film LUTs that mimic different movies. I'm using one from Mad Max Fury Road, one of my favorite action movies. If you've seen this movie, you know there are a lot of orange tones as the film takes place in a post-apocalyptic desert. So that's the tone this LUT is adding here. Although it's cool, I thought this orange tone was a little too intense, so I masked out the opacity a bit everywhere except on the sunset where I left it more intense. I really like the contrasting colors of teal and orange anyway, and it's pretty popular in a lot of sci-fi movies and artwork, so it worked out well. Here I added the Smart Sharpen layer to make the brush strokes really stand out and be more noticeable. I masked out the most egregious halos around the image caused by that extreme sharpening. The very last thing I did was add one more camera raw filter layer, just to make a few more color and tonal adjustments. I liked how they looked on everything except around the dozers, as I wanted to keep that tone how it was, so I used a radial gradient to mask the effect out of that area. And with that, I feel this image is done. I could probably spend way more hours than I already have playing around with this image, and I'm sure at some point I'll come back to it and change some things around again. But for now, I'm happy with how it looks. Please let me know in the comments if you like it, and if you found this breakdown helpful or inspiring in any way. As always, thanks for watching, and be sure to check out these other videos breaking down how I created some other artwork. Also, I release at least one video every week, so please like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.